Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video we look into three very simple ways to guide us through optimizing our entity framework or queries. However, before I start I'd like to emphasize that this topic of query performance in EF Core is not a simple topic at all and it can't be in, exhausted in one single video. Mostly because query performance optimizations heavily depend on the query itself, the amount of data that we have in the database, the data structure of the data that we have in the database and a whole lot of other variables. Still, I think that there are at least three general and very simple things to pay attention to whenever we write our own simplest or even the simplest queries in, the, uh, in Entity Framework Core. And honestly, most of us tend to get these aspects wrong. So let me introduce you to what I think are the three simple things that will make your life and the life of your app much, much easier. Stay tuned and let's look into that. So this is our very, very simple demo project that we'll use throughout the video to actually showcase these three ways that I mentioned before. But before we get started, if you think you enjoy or if you like this channel, if you enjoy this type of content, don't be shy and hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up button, and also make sure that you probably hit the notification bell so that you are notified whenever we have new content here on this channel. Now, Seeing into what we have here, this, this is actually a very, very simple application in which we have a very simple data model. Like we have here a user profile and we have here address. And of course, the user profile user can have different addresses. So we have here a typical one to many relationship. Besides that, we have this DB context, of course, and uh, it's a very, very simple DB context. We don't use dependency injection or anything else. We just have a very simple uh, uh, console application. We're just configuring um, our DB context here in on configuring in the override of the on configuring method, and we should be good to go. And that also leads us to those three ways that I mentioned before. And let me get into the first one, and this is using projections. So for that, we have here already a file. And we can look here into this very, very simple method, which is this read profile names method. Here we, of course, instantiate or create a new instance of our AppDB context. And what we do afterwards, well, we iterate through all the profiles. And for all profiles, we just want to print to the console the first name of the user and the last name of the user, which everything seems to be fine. I guess this type of code will have or we have a lot in our repositories or wherever we work with the DB context in, in, in EF Core. It's something that's really recurrent and it happens a lot in a lot of applications. However, if we think about conceptually what this code actually does and what we are actually doing with the DB context to query the data or to get the data out of our database, this query surely can be optimized. But before I get to exactly how we can optimize this, let me show you before what actually the problem is. And to do that, I'll make sure that I will run the application. So I have this projections class and we have the static method, which is the read profile names. So if we go back to our projection class and we will just run or I will just run the application and just look into what we'll have in the console. Now I have enabled on the DB context logging to console. So I would expect that I would see in the console what entity framework actually does, what SQL queries it performs and how everything works. So yeah, indeed, this also happened. Now, if we look here, we see this select, basically this query, this SQL query that EF Core generated for us. And what we can observe here is that of course we select or we want to see the ID, we need the birth year, we get the city, we get the date created, we get the first name, we get the last name, we get the last updated from our profile stable ASP. So we are using an alias or entity framework has generated a query that uses an alias, which is not bad. However, the problem is if, if we look into exactly what our code does. So in this instance, I just wanted to get from the database user profiles and just display the first name and the last name for them. Okay, so basically I need just two properties for my user in my current function or in the algorithm that I'm right now doing. But instead I'm getting for, from the database a lot of other data because I'm getting the information for all these type of, of properties that we have here. So one common problem that we usually have when we work with Entity Framework is that we get from database more data than we actually need. 
So we need a way to kind of like define in a more granular manner what data exactly or bring from the database exactly the data that we need and nothing more than that. And that's actually very, very easy to do using what is called projections. Now projections is, for instance, when you kind of like want to look into a data, but you want to project it to a data structure that's not 100% exactly like the data that we have in our database. And that's kind of like a method that's regular on Linku, and therefore, of course, we have it also here, or we can use it also on our DB context. So let me show you one very common way to do or to use with to work with projections is to use this select and let me maybe bring this even to a different row and we could even bring this to list to a different row so that we can have a better overview of what happens now the idea is that when we do a projection we can for instance say that okay i want to go to the user profiles and i say that for each profile i want to project it to kind of like a type that only contains the first name and the last name. And the cool thing is that we can, for instance, project to an anonymous type. So we can see, for instance, I want to project to a new type. And I would say here, for instance, I want to project the first name and I would like to also project the last name. So in this case, it should be fine. And we already have here a very simple projection. The code is still compiling, so everything is okay. Nothing is wrong with our code, so we haven't done anything wrong. So now if we run this application again, and if we wait just a few seconds, I would like to take a look into the SQL query that gets generated this time and have a look if it is a little bit different than the previous one. And indeed, if we look here, we have just select the first name and select the last name. So in this case, using this very simple projection, we have actually achieved a very important goal and that goal was that we bring from the database only the amount of data that we actually need right now in our application and in this very specific case this is the first name and the last name so this should be good to go so that's kind of like okay but when you are using with projection you can project even to more simpler types laws for instance that you want from this select to just print or you want from this entire query to just print the first name so in that case you can do it even simpler than that because you can project for instance directly to a new type like in this is, would be string so i would like to project the it's p from profile and we said that we want only the first name so in this case of course that this console right line doesn't work anymore because our profile you see here it's of type string right now because we are projecting to a simple string and in this case if we for instance say here console dot write line and what we want to write to the console is basically only the string itself and in this case if we run the application it should be similar but the difference is that we only query for the first name and we'll see just in a few seconds and the other thing is that we project directly to a string so we can use that string directly in our console right line so you see it's a very 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 simple query so instead of getting a lot of data out of the database when we in fact need only two two type of properties or, or two pieces of information we can use these projections to really get only the data that we need from the database and here there is one other thing that i would like to add is that this is actually a very practical advice even if we work for instance with automapper and automapper it has some extensions for entity framework core that allows you to project directly from your entities to your DTOs. And if you would like to have a look at a video in which we go deeper into how projections work with Automapper, please leave a comment below and let me know if you would be interested in such a video. And I promise I will create you if there are enough comments that would say that such a topic would be of interest. Cool. So this is the first very important way that we can use or that we can leverage to optimize or to make our EF core queries better. Let's now just take a short look to the next one, which would be how we are using streaming instead of buffering. To do this, we have moved to another class that I have prepared, which is this streaming.cs. And here there are two very important concepts that we need to note or that we would need to understand about how Entity Framework Core works when we are actually querying the data, which is buffering and streaming. 
But before we get into exactly what those two concepts mean, let's have a look at what we have here in this class. So once again, we just instantiate or create a new instance of this app DB context. That's our DB context for our application. And here we have two different methods and I have here written some comments. So this is, let's say, a method that we would most cases or based on what I have seen, once again, doing code reviews, looking through GitHub repositories, I have seen a lot, for instance, returning uh, lists from repositories. And in this case, I would like to return some addresses. So what I do, I go to my DP context. I, well, include or I look for the profiles. And yeah, I include the addresses. And what I do here is that for each profile uh, and then for each address in the profile, I would like to uh, write the console like the street, like the number, the city and the country. And if I go to my program.cs, I have already prepared it. So we have the streaming class and read addresses. That would be actually it. Uh, let's go back to the streaming and let's run the application. Just, just very, very short to see exactly what type of Query do we have, although I think that for this aspect, the query itself is not really that important. But here are all the addresses that I have in the database. Uh, each address is assigned to a user. And that's actually, as you can see, what we have here. Now, if we look to, to this query, of course, there is, first of all, the problem that we have discussed earlier. So the problem with projections. So one thing that I would do here in this instance to optimize things is actually well, use projections to just project me the addresses, not the entire user profile, and then just use the address to write it down. But since that was covered in the previous part of this video, I will not dive into it. However, there is another very important problem here. Now, the very important problem is here on line 15. And sorry for the ambulance. It's well, I'm living here very close to hospital. So that type of things happen. Now, the problem is here with this two list because what this does is actually that, okay, we go to the database, we look for the, all the profiles, we include also the addresses, and then we create a list of those user profiles, which, mean that, which means that everything from our database will be, or at least from this profiles table, including then the addresses, will be actually loaded into memory or in the memory of our application, the entire amount. Now I have only seven users with around maybe 20 addresses. So that's really not much data. But imagine when you have a database that's actually huge. In that case, when you do this type of queries, of course, things might go wrong because you end up loading into memory a lot of data. However, the second part comes that this is, for instance, a method that would mimic or mock what we would do in a service or maybe in a handler. Now, of course, in this case, what we do is a, a very simple iteration. We iterate through each profile and then for each profile, we iterate through each address and then we write down the address in the console. But that's conceptually, that's exactly what we do in services or in handlers. So we get some data from the database and we process it in a certain way that we need or that makes sense for our application. So that's why that's what we are doing also here. Now, the problem is that, of course, when we do this for each, once again, we have this list, this initial list, and everything is loaded into memory. And this idea that when we use to list or to array or this type of, uh, well, uh, this, this type of methods that actually materialize a query, that kind of loads data into memory and that's called buffering. So in this case, EF Core is buffering all the information. So it brings everything into the memory of our application, which of course is not optimal when we work with bigger data sets. So what can we actually do about that? Actually, that's very simple. And I, would, I want you to take a very, very interesting look or very attentive look here in these addresses because Rider is uh, so cool that it also gives us here, for instance, what the, this type is and to say that it's list of user profile because I have a two list here. Now, one thing to solve this problem is that I can simply remove this two list and actually everything should still work exactly the same. So if we run the application, we see that, or we'll see probably just in a few seconds, that actually we have the exact same result. So we don't have really anything different. So all the same addresses here. Uh, the, the query is quite the same. So nothing really uh, happened here on this front. However, the idea is that in this case, if we look here at addresses, we see that this is actually of type I includable 
queryable. So in the end, because this implements iQueryable, it is an iQueryable. It's just a query. Now, this makes a very huge difference because what this actually means is that if we use this iQueryable or even the enumerable and we look into this just in a few seconds, basically what happens is that EF Core streams the data. It doesn't buffer it, so it doesn't bring everything to memory, but it streams it line by line while we are iterating in our for each loop. So this is, has the, the huge advantage that we don't have to load all the data into memory at once like we do when we have a to list or to array, but instead we are streaming it line by line when we need it and EF Core just provides it to us. So that's actually very, very cool. And of course, everything works fine because we can iterate through an uh, iQueryable. Now, the idea, and here is a very, very nice part to actually look into it, is that since this is an iQueryable, it actually means that what we do, for instance, uh, here on this query, everything is executed on the server side. So when the query is executing on the SQL server. So let me just give you an example. And uh, let's, for instance, let's say here that I would like from profiles and I would like to include and let's maybe add here a where and this where like we have a profile. Um, and for each profile, I want, for instance, where profile, um, let's say dot um, ID, let's say equals one. I want to just look into the first one. Now, let me just run this query right now or run the application right now and see exactly how this actually looks into our application. So if we do this here, we just wait a few seconds and then we will see what happens here is that you see here that from this, from profiles, okay, we want this one and then we have this where. So when we have this queryable, when we have set this condition, for instance, uh, well, it did the filtering here on the server. So it is included in the query itself when it is executed on the data source, in this case, on our SQL or SQL database. However, there might be situations where you actually want to bring some data, but you might want to do your own filtering on that data afterwards. So not necessarily directly on the server because you might want to include well, more business logic specific filterings or your data manipulation or whatever you would need to do. So in that case, there are two different things. So one, one, so the first step is we need to get that data from the database via a query. But then once we have this query, we want client side to be able to perform a filtering, for instance, using this where. Now, in this case, let me show you what we can do here. So instead, instead of having this where here, I just try to move it to be client side or so not on the server anymore, but in our code, it, it will be applied. So in this case, what we need to do is actually to transform this I queryable into an I enumerable. And this is very simple here because we have this method, which is as enumerable in EF core, which kind of like transforms. If we look into this right now, it's not an I queryable anymore, but it is an I enumerable instead, which means that what we can do afterwards is we can say here where, and we can place here the same condition. So for the profile, I want the profile with uh, the ID should be equal to one. And if I run the application right now, so once again, the data is streamed. Also, if we're using as enumerable, it is not materialized. It is not loaded into memory. But if we load the or if we run the application right now, you'd see that the query itself is different than, one it, than, than what we had before, even if the result that we see in the console is exactly the same. So we see once again, only just three addresses because only these three addresses belong to the user or to the profile that has the ID one. But you see that in this case, we have the select, but we don't have the where. So you see that I queryable, we have done the filtering server side, but when we work with this enumerable or when we want to actually perform some filtering or ordering or all this type of information, but client side, we didn't just have to provide this as enumerable and not uh, as an iQueryable, and this would 
still stream the data, but still, or, but also allow us to actually do some filtering or some stuff in client side, so in our application. And from here, the conclusion is very simple, actually, that from your repositories or wherever you kind of like return data, never return lists or arrays, always return either an iQueryable, like the query itself, or if you want to actually give the opportunity to the services that, that use that specific database or that specific method to get data from the database, like a service like or, or a handler, to apply further uh, filtering client side, then expose or return an I enumerable from the method. And here uh, in your repository, then when you get the data with the context, then set it as enumerable and then everyone further on, on on the application or in the application will be able to uh, perform some filtering or other uh, stuff directly on the result set without that being executed directly on the server cool so this is then everything that uh, we needed to know about streaming and the buffering and believe me these concepts are very important and you would need to be very careful how you use them because this that this really makes a difference when it comes to optimizing our ef core queries so let's go now to the third very important way or very simple way through which we can optimize our queries and this is taking a better look at the change tracker here's the other class that we have here this is the change tracker class and here i have prepared it a little bit differently than before here we have used benchmark.net to actually uh, look into some stuff and what we have here is a very very basic setup we have like two methods we want the, to get all the addresses from the database uh, and in this case we'll use directly this uh, this db set of addresses so we'll use the addresses but then you see that we have two methods that actually do things in a slightly different way now the first one is very simple and straightforward it looks into an address or into the addresses and it lists them all once again this would uh, buffer all the addresses which might not be the best good to go so maybe we just want to keep this as a query but for the sake of this example i guess it it, it it kind of like makes sense now on the other hand we have here exactly the same thing the only difference is that we have added this as no tracking here and this bears a little bit of explanation i guess because what we need to know is that entity framework core has a very very important feature and that's probably one of the most important features why ef core is so important and why so or why a lot of projects are relying actually on entity framework or even if this as we'll see comes with a performance downside or a, at least a downside when it comes to memory allocation but we look into this just in a few seconds now this feature is called the change tracker now entity framework core what it does is that when it loads data into the db context it by default tracks that data for changes now what it happens behind the hood is in a very simple terms is that it actually creates a dictionary of entities that it has loaded from the database and it kind of like always tries to keep uh, in touch and see if any of that entities has changed during the process like for instance we have if we have changed a property for a user profile uh, entity framework would look it that if that user profile is tracked by the db context and then if it's tracked by the db context it will record the change so this is actually one first overhead of the change tracker is that it kind of like keeps track of all the entities that are being tracked by the db context but it also does something else with this when it provides the data or when it gives the data to the application to be used like when you have this two list it gives us the data to be used in our application we can then iterate through the data and change the properties for uh, all of uh, the addresses maybe that that we might have in this data set now before it actually does this entity framework core also creates a snapshot of the state of each entity and when anything changes uh, to a property entity framework core kind of like checks with the snapshot that it has created initially to see if there is any change in the state compared to what it was when the data was loaded and of course you can imagine that this also comes with a certain well, uh, overhead in memory allocation and maybe also performance. Now, this is a very, very basic and simple example. 
and I have explained or tried to explain at least how this concept of uh, change tracking works in Entity Framework Core. But what I would like to do here is to maybe set this to release because I would like to go to this program NCS and run some benchmarks here, like the benchmark runner run, and I want to run the benchmarks from our change tracker class. That that should be okay. And I would like to yes yeah, start this. And probably it will take a few seconds until everything is done because benchmark.net, it takes a little bit of time because it runs uh, these methods actually several times. It warms up the data, then it's the actual execution, then it's the teardown part. So it might take a while and we will be back right when benchmark.net finishes the job and we'll try to actually look into the result and analyze what happened. So we are back right now and benchmark.net has finished uh, the work. And let's look into what exactly we have here. So we see that here we have this get address as tracking. So we have this default behavior when everything is tracked. In this case, we see that it's 2.227 milliseconds. And the get address is as no tracking from the execution time itself is 2.202. So it's slightly better, but really there's really not a huge difference right now. But then if we look, for instance, here at the memory allocation, we see that, okay, uh, both in Gen 0 here, the get address as tracking. So when we are tracking things already kind of like has more memory allocation that we have when we have as no tracking. And yeah, for the entire or globally allocated memory for the execution of these very simple methods, we see that overall the get addresses as tracking has or needed uh, more or much more memory allocation then or compared to get addresses as no tracking. And of course here the data set is as said very, very small because we have just seven or eight users with a bunch of maybe in total 28 addresses. So there is really not a lot here, but you can imagine that as we have more and more data or a bigger data set, this will be, or the differences actually will grow more or less ex exponentially, both what it means for the execution time, but also what, or compared to the memory allocation. Now, Discussing this idea of with as a tracking, like when we do or what it is the, the, the default behavior when, when we track actually uh, everything or all the entities that we, or that are, uh, well, that are used by the DB context or when you use as no tracking, there are really a lot of different use cases and edge cases. And there are different behaviors, for instance, like uh, if you use filtering with where, or if you use includes, uh, then the behavior or the overall execution time might be uh, maybe or the difference in execution time might might be even larger. There are really also some edge cases when I know it's, it's really not very intuitive, but from the execution time perspective, there are those edge cases when uh, as tracking is even a little bit faster than the as no tracking. But really the common thing here or the common theme here, when we talk about this concept or the difference between tracking and as no tracking is that when we track entities, we always allocate more memory. And that's also a very, a very important thing. So this being said, we have covered to, during this video, three very simple, but very important and effective ways in which we can improve or, or optimize our entity framework or query. So we have looked into projections and we have seen that this helps us if we are careful to always bring from the database only the data that we actually need for our current use case and not all the data that we have there and then maybe selectively, 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 selectively sorry, use only uh, well, parts of the data. So these are, this is why projections are important. Then we have looked into this difference about buffering and streaming, and that's really, really important. And probably the most important mistake that I have seen a lot, like we always use two lists or two arrays, and then we materialize all the entire data set in memory. And that's actually not the best way to go around this. So we have seen that it's either better to use an iQueryable so that we can use with queries that are executed directly on the server and that are streamed. So when we have a for each, we get it one, uh, one line or one row or one entry uh, at a time and uh, not, uh, not have it, not have it everything at once, which is very, very important. And if we would like to keep to still keep this idea of streaming, but we want to also be 
able to perform some filtering on the client side after we have the data, then we can expose it as an enumerable. And in that case, we can apply on it also client side filtering so directly into our application on the data that we get from the database, which is also very important. And last but not least, we have looked into exactly what or how the change tracker uh, works in Entity Framework Core and uh, how this actually affects the memory allocation. And uh, we've seen that the, if we don't track uh, basically the data that we get from database that's even faster and of course we have uh, less memory allocated and here I want to maybe emphasize just one last very important thing is of course when we get the data from the database only for reading purposes then we should actually use mostly uh, as no tracking because we don't really need uh, tracking on the data but when you are getting data from the database uh, having in mind that we want to actually update something in the data then we shouldn't use as no tracking because in that case we want the data to be tracked so that we can leverage all uh, well the features and functionalities and help of vf core change tracker when we work with the data so that we can just update the properties that we want to update and and entity framework core and the db context will do the rest so that this is a very very important point this being said, thank you very, very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, don't be shy and hit the thumbs up button. Also subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to be always notified whenever we have new content on the Code Wrinkles channel. Also, if you have any question or if you just want to get a discussion going and say anything, just hit the comment section. That would be totally fine and I would be grateful and I will answer virtually all the questions that that will arise and will get involved into the discussions with you. Also, if you think that this content might be useful for other colleagues or peers or friends, don't be shy and feel free to actually share it. Um, I don't know, maybe in your social media, at work, wherever you see fit or wherever you think that there might be people that would benefit from it, share it and probably they will be thankful. This being said, once again, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.